1994, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the United States Air Force Academy initiated an innovative concept in higher education, the Field Engineering and Readiness Laboratory, more commonly referred to as FURL. FURL is a direct result of the vision and dedicated effort of retired Brigadier General David O. Swint to improve the learning of cadets in this unique course. In 2013, the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department hosted their 20th offering of this landmark class. FURL is where engineering practice and education are uniquely combined in a hands-on construction environment. Each summer, rising civil and environmental engineering juniors engage in the cornerstone of their major's curriculum, a three-week field course designed to introduce the students to their discipline and lay a foundation for their subsequent coursework. Air Force Academy cadets are joined by other students from across the United States, including West Point cadets and Naval Academy midshipmen. In the past, Coast Guard and ROTC cadets have participated. These students are led by senior cadet cadre from the previous FURL offering and are instructed by Air Force Academy faculty, visiting professors, and most importantly, enlisted craftsmen and technicians. These highly skilled craftsmen are sourced from across the Air Force and include members of the active, reserve, guard, and civilian components. This cadet-centered program with non-commissioned officer mentorship is a unique educational experience and a valuable leadership laboratory. Between the end of their second year of classes and the three-week field course, the cadets spend two weeks away from the academy at an active Air Force base. They are exposed to the operational Air Force, including the civil engineering career field. They have the opportunity to experience firsthand what Air Force civil engineers do on the job. At the end of this two-week program, they return to the academy and begin their three-week field experience in Jacks Valley. One way in which FURL breaks the mold of traditional education is through its unique construct first, design later approach. Traditional education consists of classroom lectures and labs, followed by application in the field upon completion of the academic program. Graduates of such programs may have a firm grasp on civil and environmental design principles, but likely lack experience in the practical realization of their design decisions. FURL seeks to address this issue by providing students with a common hands-on experience in construction before they ever set foot in a civil or environmental engineering design classroom. But they always said coming to the academy is like drinking from a fire hose. So it goes along just straight along with that. Build first, design later. You build it and then you kind of learn it as you go along. The course has over 20 activities including surveying, roadway paving, concrete beam construction and testing, wood frame house construction, heavy equipment operations, steel bridge erection, pipe and open channel flow design, and expeditionary wastewater treatment. There are also a number of field trips to material and processing plants in the local area. These activities allow the students to assume the role of technician under the watchful eye of mentors. In the two years of academic work that follow the FURL program, students will relate their theoretical design education to real life construction experience gained during FURL. As rising juniors, we just became juniors not too long ago, we haven't taken the structural classes like the steel design classes and the concrete classes that we're going to take later on, but we've already set up uh, steel bridges, built those, um, poured concrete, so we're kind of building all of it first and then when we go back to the classroom and learn it later, we're going to be able to see, oh yeah, that's how we put that piece together on the steel bridge or that's why we laid the concrete that way. A quintessential example of this construct first, design later concept is the concrete beam activity. During the first week of FURL, students are given formwork, rebar, and supplies and told they will receive half a cubic yard of concrete in two hours. They are tasked with constructing the strongest beam they can without extensive lecture on concrete beam design principles. After placing the concrete in the forms, the beams are allowed to cure for seven days. They are then tested to failure using a hydraulic jack and the various beam strength and failure modes are examined. Instructors help the students relate how their choice in rebar replacement and beam dimensions affect performance and what is typically used in design. Observing how their beams perform, students then begin to learn about important principles in reinforced concrete design, principles that will be expanded upon in classes later in the curriculum. It's a great way for the cadets to get experience and introduction to the, the interaction between the reinforcing steel and the concrete, and most of them have never had this before. They get this then hopefully visualized uh, in their minds, and when we go into the classroom and do the theory, 
I attempt to refer back to their experience at the Field Engineering and Readiness Laboratory uh, so that now they have a picture in their mind of uh, when this, the concrete beam starts cracking out in the center. It's because that's where the maximum stress was occurring in tension, that we expect that. Um, it's fun because they get to actually see uh, a failure of a beam, which doesn't happen very often because obviously in the design world, uh, we design so it won't fail. The concrete beam activity helps cadets understand the professional and ethical responsibility they will bear as designers of infrastructure used by a public that is trusting in their technical competence. The cadets also gain a valuable appreciation for how their design impacts constructability. The concrete beam activity isn't the only one called upon in later design courses. Indeed, all furl activities are designed to enhance and enrich cadet understanding of future lesson material. During the surveying activities that span the three-week course, cadets begin with auto-level exercises and progress through total station methods, ultimately ending with global positioning system surveying. This background greatly increases their understanding of topographical drawings and site plans used in later courses. In the heavy equipment activity, students step into the role of the skilled operator, learning and practicing the fundamentals of operating various types of heavy construction equipment. This allows a greater understanding of the skill required to operate such equipment and the factors that go into planning for their use, such as equipment cycle times and efficiency ratings, important concepts that are expanded upon in future construction management courses. During the roadway development activity, students use their newly acquired skills in heavy equipment operation and surveying to establish grade lines for a roadway, install a compacted base course, and place asphalt pavement all done under the watchful and helpful eyes of the mentors. In addition to teamwork, physically erecting heavy steel components into a bridge structure gives students insight into how plans and specifications become reality in the field. Reading construction drawings, constructability, and safety are all important issues that students learn about in this activity. Students learn to apply basic hydraulic principles in the sprinkler activity using design curves to install a system that minimizes material use while providing maximum water coverage, introducing them early on to the concept of sustainability. Additional environmental activities include the open channel flow, the classic three reservoir problem, water treatment activities, and an air sampling exercise that encourages cadets to link job site air quality to safety. All of these concepts are then reinforced in their junior year as they learn the fundamentals of hydraulics and environmental engineering design. Most of these activities would not be possible without the expertise and experience of mentors who work side by side with the students. The mentors are a significant contribution to the unique value of furl. They guide the student through various crafts while allowing them to actually perform the work. Carpenters, heavy equipment operators, plumbers, electricians, and surveyors from across the total force team work with the students and demonstrate firsthand how to function on multidisciplinary teams to accomplish project goals. In addition to supplying technical expertise for the field engineering and readiness lab projects, the mentors serve as excellent role models of the enlisted corps, showing cadets how NCOs and airmen work in the field environment. One of the things that make uh, you know these young officers a, uh, a better officer is doing things like the equipment operations here, getting hands-on. They're probably never going to do it in their career, or they're going to do it very seldom, but they're going to be in charge of NCOs out there that are going to be doing it. I think it gives them a better appreciation of the entire civil engineering career field when they get their hands-on, whether it be building the Hogan's over there or the heavy equipment operations or doing concrete work and getting in there, and it gives them a chance to interact with NCOs because that's going to be the majority of the situation when they get active duty in the Air Force. Since the summer of 1998, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering has partnered with the Southwest Indian Foundation and the Navajo Nation to build traditional Hogan-style homes during furl. These cadet-designed modular mobile housing units, complete with structural, electrical, and mechanical systems, are constructed at the furl site and shipped to the Navajo Nation in New Mexico, where they are assembled for families in desperate need of permanent housing. Each cadet works on the project once a week while at Furl, experiencing three distinct phases of construction while providing an excellent introduction to the cultural and humanitarian aspects of engineering. 
2013 marked the 20th offering of the Field Engineering and Readiness Laboratory, producing the 38th and 39th homes for the Southwest Indian Foundation. It also featured a unique tie to the cultural heritage of the Navajo Hogan-style home. Cadet Second Class Kobe Brady, a Navajo born into the Folded Arms People Clan in Arizona, helped construct the Hogans that will return to the Navajo people of New Mexico. She was eager and excited to be part of building homes that will provide needy families an opportunity for a better life through Navajo tradition. The first week we were doing um, the wood framing to hold it up and then we set the walls up. And second week we were doing drywall and insulation on the inside. And third week, which is now, we're doing um, flooring and the window sills. By integrating an educational experience for cadets, readiness training for enlisted craftsmen, and humanitarian service for the Native American families in need, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering has achieved a winning combination that truly embodies the educational concepts of culturally sensitive design and service learning. FURL has garnered national acclaim, including extensive coverage by local TV, radio, and newspaper media. Numerous visitors have been to the FURL site, including the former Secretary of the Air Force, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Commanding General, and past president of the American Society of Civil Engineers, who called FURL bold and brilliant. FURL combines innovative educational concepts with a hands-on approach to learning. This unique program will better prepare future officers and civil engineers to meet challenges both in the classroom and in practice. As Air Force civil engineering officers, many graduates look back at FURL as a key development point in their career and call upon the skills they learned at FURL to be successful engineers in remote locations all over the world. The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is proud of its graduates who have led Air Force projects ranging from airfield construction in Afghanistan to humanitarian relief efforts across the globe. It's our hope that generations of future engineers will continue to experience FURL, ultimately tying the hard-earned lessons from Jack's Valley to garrison and contingency operations wherever Air Force engineers are needed. Engineers! Engineers!